Look where I'm at. Broke down. And look. These screws are loose. So the fuel shutoff is not getting fuel throw out. The full throw out it should. <sighs> Alright, let me get my tools. And I hope that's just it, because otherwise uh, we're fucked. Wrong. Come on, baby. All these construction guys look at me like I'm an idiot. You know, the usual. Okay. That's not good. Worst comes to worst, I can zip tie up the, the fuel shut off lever until I get home. So, we'll see. All right, so I got top of my pants down. I didn't have any goddamn zip ties in the truck to wire up the fuel solenoid. So, I gotta keep it alive by kind of popping the throttle every once in a while because I think that idle set so low that it ain't gonna, it'll kill it. But I've also got a Bondi strap on the fuel shutoff solenoid. So I think there's three things wrong, which I've been meaning to address. Get actually, there's four things because the there's a little bit of tautness, like I was saying before. It would give it an inconsistent idle because there's basically resting on the string rather than resting on the idle control screw on the back of the people. So I gotta look at that distance, and I also have to look at that stripped out bolt on the fuel shutoff solenoid. So, I was gonna enjoy my night tonight, but instead, I gotta work on the truck. Ta-da! I, uh, sucks. I guess you're eventually gonna have some shit break. It's been three years. So it's about time. And also, oh my God, it's so hot. So this is my contraption I did. Really keep them, uh, that fuel supply going. As you can tell, didn't really do oh, a whole lot of nothing. So, first off, I'm gonna take off the throttle cable right there, snake it out, and see if it's got if it's free. Update time. So, figure out what it was um, when it comes to the throttle cable. Basically, there is this throttle cable, which is stocked to the Ford F350, and then there is also a return spring to the P pump, which connects on this linkage here. If I can get this stupid thing. There's a linkage there, there's, and then there's a linkage over here. And this is the throttle cable. See, this is idle, wide open. Well, between these two springs, um, that spring down there and this spring, when you push the throttle in, uh, you're fighting two springs. And so that makes a very heavy pedal. And I think that might also lead it to what the cruise control is struggling with having to fight the power of two springs while the vacuum is trying to hold it at a certain RPM. Now we gotta address the problem with the fuel coming out, like, uh, not out, but uh, coming off. And I think it could be something to do with um, the solenoid. So I'm gonna do some research into whether or not this linkage is supposed to be this tight and whether or not that solenoid is supposed to be that hot when it's running. But for now, we're gonna put this together, put the preload spring on there, and uh, see if she wants to idle where it is. 
And then, once we get that figured out, I'm just gonna adjust the idle off, sp off screen. It's not that difficult. All it is is a 10 millimeter bolt tucked way back in there. And just like carburetor, you just adjust it up or down, and there's an actual physical stop for the idle. Update. I machinered that. I drilled and tapped it. I drilled and tapped it to a bigger size. I think it was uh, 1024, I think. Core 20. I did core 20, just drilled it out, tapped it, put a new bolt in, we're done. So that's tight, that's checked. Proper distance, proper, what do you call it? Idle. And I topped off the oil, because oil is just, just a little bit low. Yeah, whatever, it's a diesel, it's gonna burn a little oil. And let's fire it up and see if she chooches. Pretty sure it will. It's just neglect on my part, but who's really shocked? <laughs> Let me get all my nonsense out of here. That's not enough. Okay. Oh, and I thread locked them. The bolts as well, holding the fuel shaft solenoid. Which, come to say, apparently they do get hot. Um, I've been driving for maybe 45 minutes to an hour. They'll get hot, so it's not a big deal. The, the big di issue is if, if it pulls up all the way, which it was. So that's properly adjusted. Everything should be good. I also, my WD-40'd all the uh, ball and socket joints, which I'm thinking I might upgrade them to Heim joints because those have a little bit of slop in them, and that could relay into a uh, uh, lag when you're on the accelerator. Fine, where's my keys? Come on. There they are. Alright, so let's give her a whirl. Foot off the accelerator. Yep. I'm happy. I'm going to step on the throttle to get it to go turn over and then we'll see what kind of pressures we're getting. Let's try and avoid any kind of parallax error. Okay, that looks like a lift pump to me because that's only building 10 psi, and the lift pump and idle should be putting like 20 to 35 or something like that. Okay, so this has been kind of a series of disjointed clips. We're finally going to wrap this up. I hope <clears throat> we've got the oh so desirable and recommended Torque Tech. So this is basically. What this takes is the stock overflow valve, <clears throat> which the older style's got just a ball bearing pressed down on this side with a spring, and that holds a ball bearing on this side um, at a certain PSI, and you saw it before, it was like 10 PSI. What this is, same concept, but this is removable, and then you can adjust how much preload is on that ball and that would give you more fuel pressure because it would allow less to slip past back to the return tank. So we're going to install this, which all it is is two O-rings, three quarter inch wrench. We're going to throw it in and see if we have better fuel pressure. And I tested it already. Press this guy in. It's pretty light. This dude, new one, she's got some oomph to her. So I'm, I'm feeling this is what it is. But I've also got this bad boy. Cummins fuel pump. 
Um, I've been meaning to upgrade to actually an OE Cummins because I have an O'Reilly's on there. And it served me well, if you can see through the jumble. It served me really well. But if that torque deck doesn't solve it, I've got this. And if not, I can always throw this in the back and keep it on hand. Why replace a part if it's working well? So let's go throw that torque deck in. And hopefully this is the uh, cause of all the problems. I'm getting really sick of driving this dumb thing. Dumb blazer. It's not nearly as cool as this thing, you know, but let's see if it works. Okay, so let me give you a rundown of exactly everything I've done so far and when trying to diagnose this. First, you saw I put new overflow valve in there with the Torque Tech. I put a new OE Cummins Carter lift pump. Like I said, I wanted to upgrade that anyway. Peace of mind kind of thing. That changed the fuel pressure. I checked the timing. Well, a friend of mine, another Fummins guy, came over, checked the timing. I didn't film any of it because it was kind of a thrash to see what the hell was going on. Timing was good. It wasn't right. It was at 14 degrees. I thought I had 16 and a half. Evidently, my way of doing timing wasn't very accurate. So the timing, it shouldn't affect it. So we didn't slip timing. All new lines running from the tank, new tank, all new lines running from the tank all the way to the uh, metal fittings on the actual pump and return. No cracks, everything was pressurized. It was fine. Uh, what else? New overflow, new blah, 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 timing. Um, throttle was adjusted. Idle was set at 1,000 RPM, and I still had a very hard time uh, starting it with no pedal. Uh, diesel was clean. New filters. First thing I did was new filters. I, have, I used the in-rail uh, fuel filter from the actual OBS Ford. And I also used the Cummins one. I just threw some cheap cheap ones on there just to see if that's what it was. Fresh diesel. Put diesel clean in it. Check the injectors. Injectors are fine. So basically everything leads down to the P-Pump. So this is what we're going to pick up. But this is kind of just an over, overview to explain to you guys what I've done so far. And what leads me to think the P-Pump needs a rebuild. It's got 220 mile, 220,000 miles which seems like a pretty small amount of mileage for a P-Pump. But the old overflow valve that I had before there was a Larry B's, and it was giving me 10 PSI. And I'm wondering if that, in combination with the O'Reilly's, with low fuel pressure, killed the pump. You know, I've been running it for two years, and maybe it was a long, slow death. I checked the governor springs. I measured the stud protrusion. It was like 45 thousandths, which is stock OE Cummins specifications. I took both sides of the governor springs out to make sure no springs were broken. I adjusted both governors, two clicks in, tried it, two clicks out, tried it, one click in, tried it, one click out in, the other way, tried it, no change. It just keeps revving up and down, up and down. And if you pop the throttle, you saw it, it died. I talked to a Cummins guy, Actually, the company I'm going to go through, Midwest Fuel Injection, they're, the guy said it might be an S-plate. I don't know what that is. I am not a P-Pump guy when it comes to like the internal workings, but he said, oh, that's exactly what it is. We're looking at maybe, uh, he says, anywhere from $1,000 to $4,200. So I might have to start an OnlyFans. <laughs> anyway, comment, rate, subscribe. All that good stuff. You know, you know the spiel. You know it. Come on, by now you gotta know it. Anyway, you guys hang in there, just like me. We'll get through it.